after this week. The challenge to her leadership could come within days, according to the eye, while the Mirror reports on three Tory MPs who have already called on her to resign. With me now to untangle it all, uh, ITV News UK editor Paul Brand and Daily Mirror editor Alison Phillips. Good morning to you both. Morning. Have you caught your breath yet? I mean, <laughs> we've, there's so much... Today is so important, isn't it? What's happening today? Just outline for us, because there's already been changes this morning. Yeah, it's moving really, really quickly yes. already this morning, Ranveer. So we know we're going to get this statement from Jeremy Hunt, the latest Chancellor yes. in the, the lineup of Chancellors <laughs> yes. that we've had over the past four months. So he's going to make a statement around 11 o'clock this morning, which we assume is going to be you turning on most of the rest of that mini budget that happened only about three weeks ago. And then he'll also address MPs this afternoon when they'll get a chance to question him, because they obviously feel that's very important to have parliamentary scrutiny of whatever it is he's going to announced. So an extraordinary day where you really feel as though the Prime Minister's fate is in the hands of the markets this morning, because as, as well as all that politics going on, we're all watching every little movement in the markets to see whether everything she's done since Friday in installing a new Chancellor has calmed those markets enough for her to just kind of get a grip of things. Have a bit of time on her side. Just to explain what it means when you say calm the markets down, because we're all using language that I think, you know, we don't all use that sort of language in everyday life. That basically means, do they trust the UK, UK PLC? Is, you know, can you lend money to the UK, trust them to give it back? Yeah, it's, it, the big focus is on bond markets, essentially. So bonds are the way that government is able to finance its debt. So it, it sells off bonds and that gives its money to plough into whatever else it wants to spend that money on. And we've been tracking those bond markets because they're a real sign of how much confidence there is yeah. in the government. Do people, do investors trust that they're going to get their money back from those bonds. And this morning, the good sign for all of us, because we all need this to go well, yes. is that those markets have calmed. They've stabilised. The bond markets are coming back down again. Down is good uh, in terms of bonds. So it looks as though what she's done since Friday has had some impact, at least. Uh, well, Alison, I mean, will any of what happens today make a difference if Liz Trust can't survive? Because then will there not be a new Chancellor? Or will... You know, how does that work? Because well, her days are numbered, are they, Alex? I think so. And I, I think, obviously, what happens today will matter, you know, as Paul was saying, is sort of calming the market. So that's a good thing. But then there's the bigger picture, which is that the only, the only calm that's coming to this situation is because we have a new Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, who, who really, whatever people might think of Jeremy Hunt, when he sort of emerged onto the scene on, on Friday night, Saturday morning, he appeared to be the first grown-up that we'd had in the room for really quite some time. And he seemed to sort of know what he's doing. He's very quickly going to act today. But all this is sort of despite the Prime Minister. And what happens if the only good thing you're having is despite the Prime Minister rather than because of the Prime Minister? And everything she believed in, which was everything we saw in that mini-budget, yeah. because she created that mini-budget with Kwasi Kwarteng, has gone, is going, will be gone. Yeah. It's over. And the problem is, of course, Paul, is that you've got to look about why she's in the job she's in. She only had a third of MPs who were on her side. Isn't that 0.2% of the UK population actually voted for her mm. to be Prime Minister because it was only Tory party members? The system that has allowed someone who simply doesn't have that much trust from her own colleagues to allow her to run the country. It's not necessarily her fault. She's a product of the system that has been created that we allow to exist. Yeah, and it's kind of a double-edged sword, because on the one hand, she's only got, like you say, the support of a third of MPs, which is part of the, the starting issue for her, really. She was always going to struggle to bring the party together. Some would say she didn't do enough of a job at, at reaching out to the rest of the party when she appointed her cabinet. But on the other hand, it means that the party is so split about what happens next, yeah. right? Because well, two-thirds of MPs don't want her, but a third of MPs want do want her. Didn't want her anyway, before yeah. she'd so even the whole done, thing put is a foot mess. wrong. So do we think how many letters of no confidence have gone in? Is is that a real thing this week? Well, I mean, I mean there, are, there, are the, there is talk that could be as many as 100 people either have sent them or are on the verge of sending them, which obviously would be, if in ordinary circumstances, would be enough for, for her to be the vote to no conference. However, there is a rule that people have got to serve a year before this can happen. However, there is also a situation where they can kind of pretty much change the rules as and when they wish. So we're, so, on, what, we're watching that I think by yeah, Wednesday as well. they're saying that they, there will be time for the rule changes perhaps to come into place, which means that should they wish, they could then have a vote to no Or more likely, somebody's going to... Few, Elder states people yes. will go in and say to her, look, this isn't working. Well, you know, the Daily Star is a, frankly, funny, ridiculous newspaper, but sometimes they get it really right. And they've got this sort of live stream, haven't they, of Liz Truss versus a lettuce, 
Which yeah. one will last longer? I think the lettuce is looking a little bit worse for wear now. Do you yes. think the outer leaf looks yeah. as though it's just wilted a little yeah. bit? Yeah, um, although those, I think that's a, it's an iceberg, isn't it? Which can last for quite can. some time. It can last for a good three weeks. Well, this is very, so, I mean, but this is the ludicrous nature of how we're having to understand the perilous nature of our governance in this country. And yeah. Paul, for you as well, you know, you have to stand there every night and talk about this in new language and new ways to explain it. Let me just show you a spoof from a comedian, which I think will make you cringe, but it will also... <laughs> An Let's take a listen. Cabinet minister said to me, watching Liz Truss lead my party is like watching a sea lion driving a Segway into a bear trap factory. She has the aptitude and charisma of a crisp packet in a high wind, and I want her chased out of Downing Street by wolves. Um, uh, and, finally another and so it goes on, Paul. I mean, comedy is struggling to keep up. Yeah, and those aren't real quotes, but no, they could but be, right? Could I mean, be. they're pretty close to what, what is happening right now and the kind of things that MPs are saying to us. Uh, and I think he's sort of taking the mick out of, out of all of that, but also out of us to some degree, that we have to stand there every night. But it's tricky, you know, MPs are furious yes. in private and you won't often see them say those things on the camera right now, but I, I can assure you that in private the whole thing is chaotic. Well, and, and I mean, there's also a poll out this morning that says if there's a general election now, you know, the, the Tories could have... Uh, sorry, the Labour could have 400 seats and you'd have all Cabinet Ministers, Jacob Rees-Mogg, he'd be losing his seat, um, Priti Patel could lose her seat, so there's lots. There's lots of people who are thinking, if this doesn't get fixed very quickly, I'm out of a job. Well, do you think, Alison, that there is any chance that if Liz Truss were to go, um, that then that rule that you described earlier could kick in again? Or will there have to be a general election? We can't well, have a second Prime well, Minister, can we? I mean, Just appointed by a small group of people once again? You'd really think not. However, obviously, it's in the gift of the Prime Minister to say when the, Which when the election Minister? should be. Well, whichever Prime Minister is in the chair <laughs> at that point. And at the moment, why, if you're a Prime Minister, why on earth would you call for a general election when you know you're going to get absolutely annihilated? So I imagine what they'll do is try and hang on in there and hope things pick up. So who are the runners and riders, then? Well, we've got all everyone who ran last time, basically. So Rishi Sunak, but then he's quite divisive because you remember how really sort of bitter that yeah. campaign was, the leadership campaign over the summer. Yes, and others um, called Boris. I mean, could Boris Johnson... Would he? Well, people do keep saying that, but really, I mean, is that really the answer to the problem that we've... I mean, we wouldn't have Liz Truss now if it hadn't been for everything that Boris Johnson done wrong. Yeah. Is that going to heal the situation? Not sure. Penny Morden, another name, although she's written a really interesting article in the papers this morning Has saying, she? back Liz. So she seems to be, at least in public, not wanting to look as though she's wielding the knife. Um, and I think, actually, this is what works in favour for Liz Truss here, right? There's consensus among MPs that she's probably not going to last, but there's no consensus about who comes next. And that's the problem, is it? And Keir, what's, how's Keir Starmer reacting, in your view? From the, you know, well, I'm actually, he's, he's like clapping his hands quite. So I think, I mean, you could argue that in some ways, if it was to stay with the Conservatives another two years, so the worst of the economy um, difficulties washes through, then that's a better time for him to take office. Yeah, but, I mean, that's so sort of ruthlessly political, isn't it? Because well, people are suffering because of it. Absolutely. But... But, I mean, it's going to be tough for the next two years, but we just need somebody who's capable in that job. Yeah. So, 11 o'clock is the time to look out for, is it, Paul, today? 11 o'clock today. And, you know, whatever you think of the politics, whatever side of the debate you're on, we all need this to work, actually. So, Absolutely 11 o'clock right. is crucial for every one of us. Well, we've been running a poll online, should Liz Truss remain as Prime Minister? And so far, 91% of you say she should go. 9% uh, think that she should stay. Who could replace her as PM? Was that another bit of our poll? I can't remember. Was it there? No, fine, OK. Nobody's got a clue on who should replace her. Um, <laughs> not even Twitter. Not even no. Twitter. Uh, thank you, both of you. Busy, busy times ahead for both of you. So glad you could make some time this morning to explain it all to everyone watching. Thank you. Uh, in just a moment.